Hello, how's it going everybody? It's your boy Incog, back at it again with another draft analysis, and this is for the BBL. I have joined Season 7, I believe, this is what it is, and I'm going to be taking Aquarius' idea of not going through each and every Pokemon, just going to go over them on screen, all of them, and just talk about why I drafted them and why they're on the team. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, check out all the other BBL coaches down below in the description. And with that being said, let's get started. I had the 15th overall pick out of 16 coaches, which means I knew all of the high tier Ubers were going to be leaving. And if you don't know what the BBL is, it's an Ubers league basically. We get two Ubers out of 41 points to select from and then everything else is kind of just free game out of 120 points. I think the minimum we could draft was 9 Pokemon and then I think the total we could draft was 12. So I kind of hit a middle ground and I think I drafted 10. I counted them just now, it is 10. So I went with a bunch of Pokemon that I have either A, not used, or B, wanted to use, or C, for only one of these Pokemon I've used before in Draft League format. So with that being said, let's talk about why I drafted the Pokemon I did. First and foremost, so Galio, Karen Black is my Uber's combo. I want to say that these two will not go well together, mostly because I fear that so Galio does not patch up the holes that Karen Black has. Karen Black just does not, it's, it's like, I drafted them both because I wanted to have a lot of offensive firepower and my team is overall just a bulky mess. So when I drafted them, I was like, you know what? I want these two to work in tandem with each other. Because at first I had double fighting types until I made my transactions. And having double fighting types is not a good idea. Wouldn't recommend it. So I'm not doing it this time. Um, this, however, let me do this. So Galio is a Steel Psychic type and Karen Black is a Dragon Ice type. As far as I understand it, I might have to put something on screen here, but I don't recall if they share any weaknesses. But, so Galio is not immune or still takes regular damage from fighting. And that's kind of a problem when there's an Urshifu running around, you know what I mean? A fighting dark type that will also beat the shit out of both of these Pokemon. Because I initially had Urshifu, single strike. And I dropped it because I didn't want to use it this league and I was planning to use it in a different league. Which does not bode well for the rest of my team, I guess. But I kind of took these two guys and I said they're physical, they're offensive, and they hit like a truck if I allow them to. And they can break a game open by themselves. And honestly, the thing about Solgaleo that I like as well is that Solgaleo gets teleport naturally from Gen 7. So, like a lot of Pokemon that get teleport, it, it's kind of one of those weird ones. But it gets teleport without wish, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it gets teleport. So I get teleport with Solgaleo out of a situation where someone's going to switch out and then I can get in my Pokemon. Since teleport had its buff from Let's Go, I'm pretty sure this is a really fun buff. I'm just saying this right now for everybody who ever has to fight me during the 8 weeks of the BBL. Now you know that it gets teleport, and you might not think it's that useful, but really, really think about it. A bulky Solgaleo set that could easily toxic and then teleport out and be a destructive steel type with Sun Steel Strike, yeah. It gets a little bit more fearsome when you think about it out loud, but I'm not gonna make anyone overthink about what I could and could not do. Kieran Black got Dragon as his generation. I think it speaks for itself being an offensive threat with 170 attack. I think everyone knows what the thing is gonna be doing. It can also be special, but I mean I'm me. I run everything diverse, so you never know. Um, they don't really cover each other too crazily, but they can if they really wanted to. Um, as long as a person does have an Urshifu or really good fighting or dark type Pokemon, I'm pretty good with these two Pokemon being my Ubers. And in general, they can be just two destructive forces on the same side is so good. Now, moving on to a Pokemon I wanted to use in Draft League, Slowking Galarian. I didn't think it would make it back down to me, but somehow it did, and I don't still know how. It's a poison psychic type that I think everyone knows about this generation, and if you don't know it, then I guess you haven't been watching Draft League or even been playing on Smogon. So, with that being said, this Pokemon is a bulky mess that also shares the weakness of Dark and also now Ghost. And that was a problem. As you can see with my team, we have a few holes that we need to patch up, but I don't have enough time to do that. Especially with my Week 1 opponent, given what Pokemon they have, but we're not going to talk about that right now, now are we? So looking Galarian has a lot of good uses, but it's mostly used as a defensive pivot and a tank at that, 
but it can also be an offensive threat to a lot of teams. Given that it also has the same amount of spadef and special attack, it can definitely be a Pokemon where you need to be prepping for it even on an offensive level. Maybe not as much because I guess a lot of people do not expand to using it offensively, but you guys know how I play. You know exactly how I do things. I do things so differently than everybody else, so we'll see how it goes. Um, other than that, really, Silken Galarian is a really good defensive Pokemon for just in general. Having that weakness to Fairy from Kirin Black, and maybe not just a Galio, but like most Fairy types get like Mystical Fire and like in general just hurt a lot. So I guess Silken Galarian also covers that base. So that's really good for me. I also didn't discuss that so Guy has full metal body, so that's going to be really interesting for Intimidators. And we have a Regenerator Mon and Silken Galarian. You never know what you can get with that combination going for you. Next up, I picked Jirachi. Still don't know how it got down here, but it was down here for me. And that's crazy to me to think about still. Jirachi was not a pick I was going to make at first, but then I noticed all the Pokemon that were going, so I just went double Psychic in my round, so... That's kind of how that went. Jirachi gets a lot of good coverage and is a bulky fucking Pokemon and hurts like a truck if you're unprepared for it. I have been doing some calcs in my later matches in the season. Let me tell you, Jirachi is going to look real good. Real fucking good. But who knows? Maybe I knows. You don't know as you're watching this video trying to figure out what I'm thinking of. Best believe you won't figure it out. I've already thought of 10 different ways to use this Pokemon. Anyways, Jirachi could be a really good rocker as well, and a decently a Pokemon that will probably be a flincher, honestly. I had Togekiss in UBL, and while I was not graced with getting as many flinches as I could have gotten, maybe Jirachi will bless me with those. Or maybe it won't. I'm not a person who likes playing with Hacks all that much, and best believe Hacks does not like me either. But we'll see how that goes. It's the game we play, and Jirachi's gonna be a part of it. So hopefully, everybody is fearful of what I can do with this goddamn star. Moving on, we have Milotic. Uh, bulky Pokemon in general. It's a good bulky water, and I took it because I wanted it, and I really wanted Vaporeon, actually, but then I said to myself, Self, let's grab Milotic. Let's see how this one goes. I want to say that we might use it physical one week, but I also have not looked too in-depth at my matchups, but it is a Pokemon that I think has a lot of good utility outside of just being the Spadef wall that also can be a defense. It's just a real, just a defense Pokemon with Flame Orb plus Marvel Skill and then really just a good chunk of Spadef. But then, like, honestly, you could use this on offensive threat and no one would beat you with it because it has such good utility, I would argue. But in an Ubers League, maybe that doesn't matter. I know that my first four picks are probably going to do pretty well in an Uber's League, but my, everything else afterwards, maybe Keldeo, but Milotic, eh, we'll see. But I know the top four will work. We'll see how Milotic goes. It's a good bulky water, and, uh, you know, not a lot of Pokemon are breaking this motherfucker, I tell you that. Next up, we have Talonflame. I wanted a Pokemon that had Tailwind, really, and originally I had Registeel. Originally. The only reason I dropped Registeel is because I made a bunch of transactions and I was one point over the amount. And Registeel was 10 points, Talonflame was 9. Rip my boy Registeel. But that doesn't fucking matter because Reg Registeel doesn't do what Talonflame does. Talonflame can set up Tailwind, can burn its opponents with Flame Body or Will O Wisp, and also can be an annoying fuck with Toxic, Sub, and other things. If you thought seeing a Raikou sub up and Toxic you and then sit there and stall you was annoying, imagine a Pokemon slightly faster and on top of which gets recovery yeah not a good situation for anybody involved i'll tell you that it's not as bulky as raiko but let me tell you i might be an annoying fuck with this too anybody who knows the raiko reference knows uh but talent flame is definitely going to be more of a tailwind more of my defog option because i only have rapid spinner and avalug which is on screen and i'm probably not bringing avalug that much i'm going to keep it a stack with you guys but hey who knows my matchups probably do not call for talent flame they might call for avalug we'll see how it goes Keldeo is here because I like Keldeo and I needed an offensive water and I grabbed another 15 pointer. It was this, Chirum, Hydreigon, and something else. I decided to go Keldeo because I didn't want to be too crazily weak to fairy, but also like crazily weak to flying and other things. Like there is so much going on in my brain at the moment. And I think also being weak to dragon while not having good ways of beating it was definitely something at the time when I had my different team because I had double fighting a Reggie Steel and some other shit and I was like you know what let's change it so Keldeo's here um 
And uh, yeah, Keldio hits really hard, a great special attacker in general, and I'm pretty sure we're never going to be using it physical, but if I ever get the chance to, I will definitely use it and abuse it, because it should not be used that way, but I've done a lot of strange things. Even if I go winless in a season or in a league, guess what? I did something that no one else could do, and that's called shocking the crowd. Regardless though, Keldeo will definitely be a fun Pokemon to use. Aromatisse is next, and honestly, I just needed a fairy, and I'm just gonna skip over Aromatisse. I think everyone, I, I think I think you guys know that it's just a bulky fairy, and I was missing one. And I kind of needed it, like, low-key. Needed a cleric, needed a fairy type, and I needed a good fairy type at that. And Aromatisse fit that niche. How good it'll do in Ubers? Who knows? Alola well, Marowak and I guess Avalug were kind of just picks that I needed because I only had 16 points left and I didn't want it to extend my draft to 11 or 12 picks so I just kind of said fuck it. Let's see how it goes. At the time period I did not have a Pokemon that could basically beat... What was it Avery? It was some crazy ass... Po oh! I don't have a ground type and there's a Regieleki running around so I drafted a little Marowak because it beats Regieleki 1v1. That's it. Unless he's banded assurance, which at that point, I don't actually think it actually will kill us. I think it can 2 KO us, but we would Earthquake it and it will die, unless it's Chukka. But at that point, it's a low in the Marowak. I think it could probably kill it with a Flare Blitz Rockhead. And, uh, yeah. Or Rockhead Flare Blitz. I said that wrong. Or even a Bone Meringue at that point. So, yeah, I needed a Pokemon that had Lightning Rod that could also just tank hits from Regieleki, honestly. And it's better stab would be normal, or, god, I keep messing up. Better coverage would be normal. And, uh, you know what? Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I don't think my opponent will bring assurance if I have to fight them this season, because I actually don't, I actually don't know if I fight, um, is it D-Ray who took it? I don't know. I think he did, and I'm pretty sure I fight him as well. So, hey, that's what this Pokemon's basically here for, because I don't want to lose to Regieleki. I mean, I have a Jirachi and a Sogalio. But at the same time, that bitch still hurts. So I brought a Pokemon that shouldn't die, hopefully. And at the time of my drafting, I had a Registeel, a Zamazenta regular, and a goddamn Urshifu. Yeah, I was losing to Regieleki pretty badly at that point. So this is what I got. A Malola Marowak. Will it help? Who knows? Last but certainly not least, Zavlug. It's literally just here for rapid spin and is a bulkier ice type, I guess. That's it. Like, it has good defense. I could use it as a mirror coder, but, like, honestly, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that I do that at this point. But, I don't know. I don't really care. We're going to find out what happens later, because I don't know if Avalug's ever going to be brought. It could be, and it could be a really good gimmick Pokemon to bring for a specific matchup, but we'll see. I don't think anyone's really expecting me to bring it. Uh, but, for my outlook on the season, I am fully expecting to try and go 4-4 four and four or above. I am tired of losing, as most people know, for my 0-9 UBL season. It was my first season there, and honestly, as of recording this video, just being full frontal with everybody, I don't know if I'm going to be invited back or if I'm going to go back. I don't know yet. I have to see what my life is looking like currently, but we'll see. But hopefully we can do really well in BBL. I know my team, it looks a bit lackluster if I'm not going to cap with you guys, but hey, we're still going to give it all we got, and we're going to be entertaining at the same time. A skill that I don't think most people have. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did like the video, subscribe, and check out everyone down below in the BBL. And I think week one we face... Hold on. It's uh, Josh, aka Ultra Player, and his New Orleans Saints Snow. I forget what his team looks like, but I know there's a Groudon, so that's going to be epic for my team to deal with. Anyways, talk to you guys next time in the BBL.